rooftop is silent. The wind is gone and nothing makes a sound. I can't approach Shaper and I just stand there. I don't know if I'm still confused or if my heart is still captivated by that sword. My mind is acting strange and only insignificant things come in my head. Why does she have that sword? This golden sword is the property of a well-known king of knights. I try to think how she ended up with that sword. And I notice that I'm trying to avoid the simplest of answers. There's no need for complicated guesses. That sword has always been hers. That's why her true name is easy to figure out. I don't know what kind of mistake was made. But there's only one person she can be, if she has that holy sword. That was my biggest hint. And that's why I'm not surprised what her true identity was. I mean, people who've played the Fate games, I, I'm aware that her identity is one of the most well-known things. I went in completely blind, so I didn't know, but she kept talking about honor and knights, and I just combined that with the fact that her weapon was so well known that it had to be hidden. So if you combine those two together, it's very easy to figure out. Saber does not move from the stance that completed her blow. I should run up to her, but my body won't move. Up to now, I only understood in words that Saber was a heroic spirit. Perhaps I realized that she was a hero of the past, something different from me, and I hesitated to go near her. <laughs> I hear a scream. <laughs> Shinji? Something is burning in the background. I look in that direction. There, I see a book burning in ashes and... <laughs> well, <laughs> serves you right. Shinji is there watching the burning book. Shinji! <laughs> you must have realized that Ryder is defeated. I need another disadvantage. Inji turns his back to me as if to flee and runs towards the exit. He's such a coward, tackling and trying to kill people when he has all the power. But when the power is gone, he's just a coward. Inji jumps through the door leading to the stairs. Mate, Shinji! I can't let him go now. The instant I start to follow him, out of the corner of my eye, table collapses. Oh no, not again. My mind freezes. Jinji is running away and Saber is on the ground. I... This isn't even... This isn't even a choice. The hell with Shinji. We need to look to Saber but first. Things were updated, but I'm not sure what exactly was updated. Right, maybe.
Oh, she has two number phantasms. That's it. So let's see. Pains of the heroic cavalry. All abilities increased by a rank when in use. AC plus. I'm afraid I'm not sure what that means. Will also be in effect. It is a physical attack that destroys the target by controlling a divine beast and using its powerful charge. Supposedly, the maximum speed is 400 or 500 km per hour. It is a normal phantasm of the highest level in both attack and defense. As defense also increases while in use, due to Pegasus' divine protection. Lavron is the name of the young man in Greek mythology who supposedly managed to ride Pegasus. So yeah, let's just run to Saber and see how she's doing. I forgot to save, but it's okay. I'm sure I wouldn't make this other choice. I can't leave Saber alone. Rider is gone, and the book that holds Shinji's command spells has burned. Shinji doesn't have a servant anymore, and he has lost his command spells as well. I can call the match settled. Let's just hope that Saber is safe. This is not going to disappear. So the priority right now is Saber. Saber! I just love how he screams her name. I run to her. Golden Sword isn't in her hands anymore. It has disappeared and only Saber herself remains, but... Saber doesn't look wild at all. She had sweat on her brow. And her breathing is weak yet irregular. As if she has a fever. So Saber! What I call out to her timidly, but she doesn't answer. She's unconscious. Saber. I touch your forehead. I automatically pull my hand back. It's unusually hot. If this is a fever, she's over 40 degrees. Saber! I should even when I call out to her, her only reply is heavy breathing. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know, but I'm sure we can't just stay here like this. I pick Saber up. She's light. She was light before, but she's lighter now. No. More than that, she's... Saber is still Saber. I'm angry at myself for hesitating. Damn it. What if she's a hero? No matter who Saber is, she's here right now and she's warm. How stupid of me to think there's a wall between us in spite of that. Saber. I run, still holding Saber in my arms. There's no feeling of victory. All I feel is Saber in my arms, breathing painfully. Oh, this is the same dialogue we had last time. So, Tosaka そう。セイバーの手当てなんてできないからな。まあ、鎧を脱がせて楽にさせただけだから、お礼を言われるほどじゃないわ。セイバーの体も良くならないし、私は何もしてないもの。But still, having those guys around helped. Was the one who yelled at me when I came home in a panic about what to do. 
She worked out Saber's situation and advised me to take her armor off and let her sleep. It's been an hour since then. Somehow, communicating with the unconscious Saber, Tosca took her armor off. So, what happened? I thought Saber was looking for me. I hesitate. Saber's noble phantasm. I should avoid revealing a true name. It's not something I can reveal by my judgment alone. Rider, I was killed. Shinji was killed and retired. But at that time, I was Tosaka falls into a meaningful silence. She's Tosaka, so she should be able to tell that it was no ordinary matter. まあ、追求するのは勘弁してあげるわ。今のあなたたちはそれどころじゃないものね。それどころじゃないってどういうことだ。言葉通りの意味よ。あなただって不数数は気づいているんでしょ。このままじゃセイバーが消えるってことぐらい。I was afraid this would happen. Only Tosca mentions the result I have avoided thinking about. 消えるって。セイバーが消えるっていうのか、お前は。セイバーの魔力はほとんど空っぽなのよ。セイバーの宝具がどんなものだったかは知らないけど、よっぽど魔力を使うものだったんでしょうね。セイバーは自分の中の魔力をほぼ消費してしまった。今彼女が苦しん
そんなことはしないと言ったんだ I still don't know Samus,、um, sorry, Ryder's true identity. Even though I feel like with her weapons, that should be a clue.、But、somehow I'm just not seeing it. De show, ne? If Panjin or Gisele needs to do good, I know. Saber is a good one. I know. Nara, ho ho, a hito to the keo. セイバーを消したくないのならあなたが魔力を提供するしかないわそれはできるならとっくにそうしてるさけど俺は魔力を提供する方法なんて知らないあいにく遠坂みたいに何でもできるってわけじゃないんだまあね共有の魔術を教えてあげても間に合わないシロは魔術師に向いてないから覚えるのに1年ぐらいかかるだろうし覚えたところで使えないわまあ召喚時にセイバーとパスは通っているはずだからまだ他に方法があるかもしれないけどまさかポンダースまだ only for a moment トスカ looks at me with an expression expressing her emotions いいセイバーを助けたいのなら彼女自身に人を襲わせて魂を食べさせるしかないそれはあなたにも分かってると思うけどもちろんセイバーは嫌がるでしょけど放っておけば遅かれ早かれセイバーは消えてあなたは他のマスターから狙われることになるなら答えは一つよレイジを使いなさいエミヤクそれで最悪の事態は避けられる決断はあなたに任せるわセイバーは眠らせておけば落ち着くだろうけどそれでも限界は近いでしょうねバリアン。To prepare for the war against these barbarians, the Empire de deprived this island country 
of any military forces. That was the beginning. Once the country lost the Empire's protection, it could not, not escape becoming independent, and it broke into smaller countries in no time. Barbarian invasions, self-destructive strife between clans, a long period of war, that would later be called the Dark Ages. He was born into this period as the heir to the throne. It was a long period of chaos. The king believed the Magus prophecy and yearned for the birth of his appointed successor. But the child that was born was not the one the king desired. The child was not a boy. Even if the child was fated to become a king, he could not make a child that was not a boy his successor. The girls entrusted to the knights, knights to the king's vessels and was raised as a child of a mere knight. The king fell into despair, but the makers was delighted. The sex of the one who would become king had never mattered. He was confident that the fact of the girl being separated from the castle until the day of the prophecy was proof that she would become king. The girl grew up as her successor under the simple and wise old knight. The old knight did not really believe the makers' prophecy. He just felt the same air from the girl as he did from his king. So he felt that he must raise her as a knight. And he wished her to grow. But the knight did not even have to wish for such a thing as the girl trained day after day to become stronger than anyone. If only a king can save the ruined country, held it for death. Girl swore to wear a sword for that reason alone, without ever being told so. So, the day of the prophecy arrived. Knights and lords from around the country gathered to be selected as the king. Every one of them expected the selection to be true jousting. If the most superior one was to become a king. But one thing prepared at the place of selection was a naked sword stuck in a stone. On the hilt of the sword was a golden inscription. Whosoever pulls out this sword of this stone is rightwise king born of England. And the knights grabbed the sword following that command, but no one was able to pull the sword out, and the knights began to the expected method of selecting by jousting. As the girl was only an apprentice, she was not qualified to joust. The girl neared the dreaded stone of selection and reached out for the sword without hesitation. Yeah, yeah. When she turned around, before her was the most feared makers in the country. The maker said that she would no longer be human when she took hold of that sword. The girl only responded with a nod. Becoming a king means no longer being human. She was prepared for that ever since she was born. In short, a king is the one who kills everyone to protect everyone. The young girl thought about it every night and shuddered until morning came. 
No day passed that she did not fear that fact. The girl said that it would end this day. The sword was pulled out as if it was only natural to do so, and the place was filled with light. In that instant, she became something not human. The king's gender does not matter. No one will care about the king's appearance, or even notice it, if the king's act like a king. Even if anybody noticed that the king was female, it would be no problem if she was a good king. Perhaps because of the sword's magic, the girl's growth stopped at that time as well. Many knights feared it at Omnius, but most of them praised their master's immortality as divine. And thus, the time of the king who would become a legend started. The battles of the new king were indeed the ex for god of war. The king always led from the front. No enemies could stand in their way. Materia, the god of war. There was no defeat for a body admired as a dragon in human form. For 10 years and 12 battles, she knew only victory. Those were the days she ran through as the king. She never turned back and was never disgraced. She was raised as the king and fulfilled her obligations as the king. I recognized this CG, it was in the opening, weirdly enough. Although, to be honest, I didn't recognize that sword as a Excalibur. I never really knew what it looked like. Is that why I saw such a figure? Or so must still be on the battlefield? Before daybreak, resting her body in the wind under the indigo blue sky. She just gazes into the distance. The sky's high and the clouds are flowing fast. Under the clear air, she's looking at the great army she must face with a sword in hand. The figure is burned in and will not go away. She and the sword are one. The sword from the stone that chose her the king. I think the brilliance of the sword that selected her fate is also her brilliance. But I wonder in the dream, that sword is different from the one she had. It is similar, but different. The one she used last night is different from this sword. So, how did she lose such a fine sword?